Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to take a look at error handling, how to properly handle errors in your Microsoft Access VBA. Yes, this video is a little more advanced for the developers out there. If you've never done any programming in VBA before, go watch this video, my intro to VBA. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started programming with VBA. For the rest of you, let's continue on. So what is error handling? Well, error handling is basically putting stuff in your code to avoid things like this, right? This runtime error 3075. Errors like this are very user unfriendly. Your end user is going to get this and go, uh, what? Plus, if you've compiled your database and made an ACCDE file, which you should before you give your end users your database, this won't show up. Your database will just crash. It'll just crash, exit access, and no one will have any idea what's going on because it won't go into any kind of debug mode if you're not using the full version of access. Proper error handling can give friendly, meaningful messages to your users like, oopsie, sorry, this button ain't working right now, right? <laughs> prevent crashes, and control the flow and execution of your code if an error occurs. Let's take a look at a very simple example of when something like this happens. Got a customer form, right? Click on either orders or contacts. It opens up another form to show their orders or their contacts, right? But what happens if the user goes to a blank new record, right? Customer ID is null, so if I try to see their orders, bam, right? There's my syntax error. Query expression, customer ID equals null. All right, and if I hit debug right now, which you don't want your end users ever doing, it takes you to this line and you see it's all in yellow. And if you hold your mouse over customer ID, it'll say that it's null. So there's your problem. I'm gonna stop the debugger. Now there's a couple of different ways to handle this. First, you could try handling it in the code itself by checking that value, right? If is null customer ID then exit sub or even give them a message box and say, hey, you don't have a customer, but at least this will exit out, right? If you come in here now and hit the button, okay, nothing happens. Okay. But for the sake of argument, for the sake of class, we're not going to do that. We're going to use some actual error handling commands. Yes, usually you'll use error handling commands and stuff that's a lot more complicated than this, but this is a simple example for demonstration purposes. So the first thing you could do is basically tell Access, if you run into any kind of errors, I don't care what it is, just ignore it and continue running the code. And that command is on error, resume, next. That says, you hit an error, I don't want to hear about it, just keep going. All right? And that's fine for simple things like this, where you got like one or two pieces of, you know, uh, lines of code in here. Okay, and we'll come in here, and we'll hit the button. And we don't get an error message. And that'll handle anything, not necessarily just a customer ID that's null. If you've got a couple of different lines of code in here, you don't got to check for each different circumstance. Now, it's not going to give the user an error message, but at least nothing bad will happen like your program crashing. I will only use on error resume next in very, very small blocks of code where it's going to either do something very simple or exit out. All right, I don't use it in big, long procedures that's got lots and lots of stuff in it because it just gets crazy. Now, if you do have a lot of other code after this, okay, let's say you've got, uh, you got this and then you've got like a whole bunch of other stuff down here, right? More lines of code down here, okay? And you just want to get away from this one line causing a problem, but you might not be able to check to see what it is. You can do that and then you can say after it on error, go to zero. Go to zero basically turns that error handling off, okay? I use this a lot with DLOOKUPs where I don't necessarily know if it's going to return a weird value and NZ doesn't handle it, right? You can try your DLOOKUP. You'd set your value up here, try your DLOOKUP. But here you'd say, okay, ignore the next line if it causes a problem, do it. And then right here, it turns that message back off. It turns that error handling back off. So you can continue normal execution. Now, on error resume next isn't super friendly, okay? What you can do, what I prefer doing, is I like saying on error go to my error or whatever my location whatever you want to call it okay then somewhere else down in your code down here let's say you can say my error put a colon after it now this location in your code is a spot that any error will jump down to if it hits it 
Okay, so if this line generates an error, it's going to immediately jump down here. And here you can say, uh, message box, you know, an error was generated. Okay, and that's going to say, okay, uh, you know, don't, don't cause a problem with this. If an error happens, just jump down here. What you got to be careful, though, is if an error isn't generated, it's still going to pass this and jump down here. So what you have to do is before that, you have to put in an exit sub or an exit function. All right, you want it to run this and this and this and this, whatever other lines of code you've gotten here. And then if everything is okay, exit the sub. And down here, you put your errors. And you can have multiple error locations. You could say, okay, if this one generates an error, go to my error. All right, and if you get another one after that, if this one generates an error, go to my error two or whatever you want to call it. Okay, but we'll just stick with the one for right now. All right, so save that. And if I come in here and run it now, if I go over here and there is no error, it opens up nicely, right? But if I go to a blank record and I hit the button, boom, an error was generated. And you can give the user a more, you know, elaborate description, whatever you want to say in here. And you can use the different options and titles and critical and all that stuff too in the message box. Now, if you've got lots more stuff in here, like let's say after you run that piece of code, you want to also message box, everything is okay. Okay, so you want to open that form and then you want to message box, everything okay. All right, the way this is running right now is it'll generate the error, drop down to here and then finish. All right, so if I come in here now and I run this, an error was generated, and that's it. But if you want it to say, okay, just give me the error for this message, but then continue executing the rest of this subroutine, you could say down here, resume next. What that'll say is, okay, resume execution, starting with the next line of code. So you'll get your error message, but then the rest of the sub will run. That's up to you. If you want, you know, if everything else in here has to go too, and then you just want to exit out, See, here we go. Error was generated, but everything's okay. All right, so you prevented it from crashing, but you still got everything's okay. And yes, you can actually res resume at specific locations too. If you've got multiple different uh, things in here and you want to say, okay, if this error is generated, jump back to this location, you could say my location here and then make something else up here called my location. Like that. So if an error happens with this line, right, it's going to jump down to my error, give you the error message, resume with my location, give you everything's okay, and then exit the sub. See how you can bounce around? Do you guys remember the old programming languages? Like the old basic? I, I started on a TRS-80 with, you know, old, you know, a Tandy Coco basic, right? It was 10 print, 20 go to 10, and you could loop around with using line numbers, right? These are kind of like line numbers. They're line locations, kind of. All right, so now if I run this, right, error is generated, everything's okay, and it exits out, right? Goes from here to here, back to here, does this, and then exits. Okay, and this is really all just based on the flow of your program, how you want it to handle. I've got hours and hours of different lessons covering different uses for these things. I start off with basic debugging and error handling in Access Developer Level 2. Then I spend a lot more time with advanced debugging in developer 15. We actually spend a lot of time with different error handling setups using the immediate window, watches and breakpoints, all kinds of stuff. So this right here is just scratching the surface. There's all kinds of stuff you could do with these things too. So there's, it's, this is lots and lots of ways to debug your code and to set up error handling. So there you go. There's your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something. Check out my developer courses for lots more information on error handling and debugging. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. 
Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for Tech Hub questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.